alert we're back for circle season four coverage here on rob as a podcast i am rob sisternino back with our chief anchor for circle coverage here on rjp it's taryn armstrong taryn how are you rob we've come full circle talking about the circle season yeah, we, five we really have uh what a two-year journey it's been right uh, actually no three-year journey uh i believe it was like january 1st 2020 that's how we mm. got that year started and netflix dropped a bunch of episodes of the circle and we said look at this this new thing 2020 circle it's a new era and boy how things have changed how <laughs> things have changed which is exactly the same yeah it's it's a it's a three-year-old show uh that feels like it's been on for 10. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes or at least five mm -hmm. yes okay so uh here we are is this circle is a uh, is this circle season five I I think so, right? Something oh, okay. Like that. There was one that I missed, which was I, I get I, I apologize. Uh, let me issue a retraction. Earlier in this podcast, I said it was Circle Season Four. It's Circle Season Five, but it's Season <laughs> Four to me because I did not watch one second of uh, Circle Season Four. Oh well, you missed out. I heard there was the Spice Girls were there. Th they might have been. Mm -hmm. you yeah. Never know. Any highlights from Circle Season Four that you remember? A uh, great winner. Great winner of the season. Yeah. Why? What was so great? Uh, it just played very, uh, very well, very strategically. Uh, oh, it was okay. good stuff. Well, they did open up the Circle Season 5, and they described Circle as the ultimate strategy game. The Circle is back. Yeah, the ultimate strategy game where strategy, you can put as much strategy as you want into it, and it probably won't matter. Mm -hmm. That's why that... <laughs> that, that you need so much strategy that there that there is no strategy. That's exactly. why it's the ultimate strategy. The ceiling game. is so high uh, mm -hmm. that, like you know, you can break Big Brother, you can break Survivor, you can't break the circle. Uh, the, you can the, try. The skill ceiling's too high. Yep. Okay. Ultimate. Karen, what what's been uh, new with you? Uh, just hanging out. Uh, you know, going live on Twitch, watching mm -hmm. shows, having mm -hmm. some fun. Yeah. Uh, waiting for the circle to start. Waiting for the circle. All right. Well, it's finally here. There's some familiar faces here. So we'll just uh, talk about episode one here today. Uh, I know that a lot of people are probably just going to binge all of the episodes. And if that's uh, what you're up to, then I don't know how you're hearing this podcast, but we are going to be back on Friday with a week one roundtable to talk about everything from week one of the circle. Yes. This is like our initial impressions of the cast of the season. Mm -hmm. Uh, just to kind of like, if you want to dip your toe in the water or if you want reactions from that first episode, uh, that's what we're here for. And a couple of familiar faces here in uh, the Circle uh, Season 5. Uh, a couple of people that we know from the world of Big Brother. One person we got to know pretty well. The other person we knew for a day. Uh, that is Brett. Not, not Brent. Brett from Big Brother 20. Yes, uh, our own lovable douchebag. Lovable douchebag. He's here in the circle for some reason. You know, uh, is, is, if he's competing with Winston, you know, mm -hmm. Winston was on an episode of Love Island mm -hmm. uh, and, and Brett needed to be on an episode of The Circle. Yeah. And in retrospect, I think he's a terrible casting choice for The Circle. You think? I think so, because I feel like the thing about Brett is that as the lovable douchebag, he's not a douchebag, the lovable douchebag, self-proclaimed. The thing about him is that you see, oh, like, oh my God, he is such a tool. He is the worst. But then you kind of, if you get to know him, he's the guy that makes the anal ice jokes. Like there is a charm about him, but it is an acquired charm. And the circle is not a game for a person that has charm that takes a while to develop. I don't know. I feel like isn't isn't that kind of like the Joey, right? I feel like I feel like we get that character a lot. Uh, they just they need to survive the first couple of rounds in order to like endear themselves to both the audience and the players. I would say the difference between Joey and Brett is that Joey is like has like big like golden retriever energy of that he's excited to see every single person. And I think that mm. Brett is a little like too cool for school uh type energy of like that he's not gonna be like excited to see every single person that he is somebody who like I, I think uh that he is uh looking for you to approach him. 
Well, yeah, I mean, he's uh, every uh, frat boy douchebag that you've seen uh, your whole life, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is not normally a likable character. And he always and, wins. Yeah, and spoiler alert for episode one, is he off the show? Eh, I don't know. Do Look, we, I, we both only watched the first episode. I feel like they're eliminating two people right away. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like they've, they're probably going to do something with these people, right? At well, some what do you point. think they're going to do? Uh, they they could bring him back in the same room. They've done that before. They could uh, they could even just have them do. I don't know. I feel like I feel like we spent so much time getting to know two of the eight mm -hmm. people introduced. If they're just like straight up gone in the first episode, yeah. I just feel like that's a lot of wasted time. I feel like they're they've got to do something. With yeah, we'll do something with them. I don't think Brett's off the show. And then the other person who we really didn't get to know too well, but for a day. We thought that he was one of the cast members of Big Brother 24. It's Marvin. Yes, and and he almost made a bro, big big bro alliance with Brett. Mhm. Mm yes. Didn't work out. Yes, uh almost uh that there was a that could have been the new Winston. It, truly. I mean Brett was the Winston in this instance, I think. Mm -hmm. We'll see how we'll see how far Marvin goes. <laughs> yeah. So, um Okay, so here we go, and um, Marvin is here. Do we have any FOMO about uh, not getting to see Marvin on Big Brother after getting to see Marvin for one day on The Circle? Well, I, th I, I mean, I think it would be fun to see Marvin on Big Brother, but I, you have to account for the fact that if you sub in Marvin, you have to take out Joseph. Maybe put mm -hmm. Joseph on this season of The Circle, uh, which would be a little weird, I think. Yeah, M Marvin, I feel like uh, I did not have the FOMO for Marvin in the Big Brother house after watching one episode of Marvin on on the, the circle. I feel like that Marvin was like twerking the whole time. Mm. Uh, he does like strip the tease stripper dancing. moves, strip tease dancing constantly. Mm. Like, I feel like that these type of people tend to be the most annoying people to have in the Big Brother house. I thought strip tease dancing would involve like at least pretend taking your clothes off. He, he Isn't doesn't that the have whole his point? clothes on ever. <laughs> like, I what, feel what like he he's, take off? he's doing the dance you do after you've already stripped. So is that still a strip tease at that point? Or is There's it no now tease. the strip dance? It's already stripped. Stripped. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then he was also on America's Got Talent also. And he does like experiments. Uh, he, he like claps uh, his abs. Oh, he claps his abs. Maybe I'm getting him confused with Nick Yuhas. <laughs> well, no, he did. He pretended to be an experiment person, but then the whole, he just ripped his lab coat off and he clapped his abs instead, mm -hmm. uh, which I think is like the whole, like he's pretending to be a personal trainer, which is funny because that's what Joseph pretended to be on Big Brother as well. Um, mm -hmm. And he was convinced that people would think that he was uh, a catfish. Uh, which is uh, also funny because uh, Big Brother found out that he was a catfish uh, as well. That's when they had to kick him off. He was yeah, on, on another being, show already. Being on too many different shows. All right, so Marvin is here. Brett is here. Just two uh, two of the eight people that we've met here on The Circle Season 5. And, you know, this is basically, Taryn, uh, The Circle. Uh, we're, like, loading ev everybody in. We get Circle Chat. Really, uh, no big surprises until we get to the elimination. Yeah, I, I feel like I feel like it, it, an issue that we've had with the circle before is that it tends to go around in a circle. Uh, and when we get a bunch of seasons in a row, it, it also seems that way even more so. But like the conversations definitely feel pretty samey in terms of like, mm -hmm. hey, isn't it so wild that we're here? Let's do awkward, weird flirting. Um, let's, let's, uh, oh, you're not giving me much. Is this person a catfish? Um, and it feels like, uh, like the, the producers are looking to sort of hopefully break that mold. I think that's what the game of like, who would you block uh, gets mm -hmm. to eventually, but definitely feels yeah. a bit samey. At well, first. the theme for the season is the circle singles. Uh, so we're really trying to build off of the flirtation angle here in the circle. I wonder if this is sort of like a love is blind, maybe even too hot to handle effect of maybe like Netflix is having the most success with the dating type shows. And maybe they're trying to steer the circle in that direction. It's definitely possible. It it felt almost incidental that uh, that they were all single because they weren't even all single. Like I mean, like mm -hmm. they've been advertising this is an all single cast, and then 
uh, Chaz, uh, Shampoo Poppy, uh, comes in. He's like, yeah, I'm engaged. Uh, yeah. for but they're all years. pretending to be single. I yeah I guess so um you know and that's that's definitely something that could be happening but I, I don't know it felt like it felt like they were all kind of like oh hey, hey look we're all we're all single huh mm-hmm. weird yeah anyway is that something that you have to do on the circle can you even come into the circle and say you're in a relationship and then like I, like I just wonder like on the circle where it's like if everybody is zigging maybe you should be zagging. I agree. Uh, I think, granted, you don't get to see what other people are doing before you make your profile. But um, but I think that most of the time you can assume most of the people are going to be single because that's what they're looking for. And I think that once you go down that flirty path, mm-hmm. it's just so shallow and, and difficult to like get anywhere. Uh, I, I feel like it usually doesn't work out very well. Obviously, we you know, we saw Joey from season one uh, be successful with the flirty stuff. But um but I feel like beyond him, it, you usually don't see like a, an overtly flirty person win the game. Uh, I, I feel like those connections just aren't as genuine and they're not as strong. And also you tend to, you know, come across, I think, threatening to other players. Yeah. I wonder if you just came in and said you were married and I think everybody would say like, oh, no, this person's definitely not a catfish. It just seems like it's the most obvious like catfish move to make. I guess that's why people get catfish all the time uh, for in dating. But like uh, I, I think that you would be like have so much like uh, authenticity if you just said you were in a relationship. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, you're much less likely to be seen as a catfish. And I mean, even if you're single, just say that you're dating somebody. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, and then uh, they did have a question about how many times you've cheated on a partner. Uh, if if you really need to flirt, just be like, "Look, I'm I, I'm in an open relationship, actually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. uh, like you, your options are open." Um, but but I think for the most part, I think it's easy. Just say you're in a relationship. It's gonna be you're gonna be better off. Okay. Let's talk about the rest of the people that are here on The Circle Season 5. Uh, the first person we meet is Xanthi. She is a model, but she is playing a preschool teacher. Which is the classic, uh, like, every... Uh, tip, typically, like, um, like, if you are a young, smart person, you're going to pretend to be, a, like, a preschool teacher or, like, some kind of young, young kid teacher because then... I think the logic is like, I don't have to actually know anything because mm-hmm. I'm only teaching children. Um, and uh, it's a very like, uh, like feel good job and it'll make me seem friendly and likable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Should people work out like what are the really fake sounding jobs and then not pick that and then go with a job that's not a fake sounding job? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I in terms of even just the circle, I think nurse is a very popular mm-hmm. fake job. I think uh, all the teacher. things that Danielle Murphy uh, said she was right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it happens a lot on Big Brother. I, I'm sure it happens a, a construction worker on Survivor, big one. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, you gotta just avoid those ones. Okay. Um, Brian is here. He is 47, but he is playing as his daughter. Yeah. Hashtag sugar boo. Sugar boo. Uh, and he, and he is going to be, he is Brittany, correct? Brittany. Yes. Yeah. He's, and it's not Brittany, bitch. It's Brittany's dad. <laughs> yeah. And immediately falls into the trap, uh, of like every catfish, which is that like every single message from him is so generic. Uh, like, Hey, OMG, mm-hmm. isn't it so wild that we're here? And then like gets into a private chat and is like, OMG, no, you're totally chill. We're all great. I love mm-hmm. you. Yay. Um, and it's just like, come on, we got to do better. If you're going to be a catfish on the circle, part of your application process should be like, what? how are you going to actually act as a catfish? Because it's it's so bad. Yeah. You you saw it in the conversation with Chaz later on where Chaz's like, okay, you're not giving me anything. Uh, yep. How do I, like? and I feel like that that's like a common trap that the catfish fall into where they're just, you know, as you're saying, like they're super generic and like the catfish thing sort of like boxes them in where they can't be authentic. They're so focused on playing a role that they're not actually engaging in the conversation uh, with the other person. 
um, right? Because they're focused on like themselves. Like they've all there's already two people in the conversation with a catfish. There's the actual person, the person that they're catfishing as, and there's not enough room for the person they're actually talking to in that right. conversation. Right. It's almost like that they're coming into all these conversations like defensively. Like I'm yeah. not going to give up anything that's going to reveal me, as opposed to like, okay, how how do I like make a connection with you? Exactly. Yeah. The best catfish are the ones that are like. No, that was entirely my personality. I just used a different picture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, we talked about Brett. Uh, he's coming in. Uh, that they. I was surprised that they acknowledged that he came from Big Brother. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I think it would be weird if they hit it, but uh, it would be <laughs> what would have been weirder if they had acknowledged that Marvin also theoretically came. Mm -hmm. from <laughs> well, do you know what was the time frame on this? I, I had. I feel like that Marvin filmed this before right. Big Brother aired. Yeah, I think he must have, uh, <laughs> because otherwise, you know, somebody like Brett might have known Marvin ahead of time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, but uh, but yeah, I, they acknowledge he's from Big Brother. He came in sixth place, um, and I think he's got some confidence from his time on Big Brother. I feel like he feels like ah, I, I can do this. I've got some social skills. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we have Raven. Uh, this is an interesting setup here. Uh, Raven uh, is a deaf person. She also has her interpreter uh, there with her. Do we know the interpreter's name? Uh, Paris, I think. Paris. Okay. Um, she is, uh, quote, deaf AF. Mm -hmm. um, and um, this is my pick. This is the winner. Yeah. Uh, I think it's definitely possible. I mean, I think she seems like a sweetheart. Uh, I liked how bad she felt about rating people. Mm -hmm. uh, I liked that. I also, I like Paris as an interpreter. I feel like yeah, he does a good great too. job. Of he's like, better than half the people that are on the show normally. <laughs> yeah, like he's giving more emotion in his interpretation of what Raven is saying than some of the people on the cast are being themselves. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, I, I love the the pair of them. I've liked what I've seen from Raven so far. Uh, and uh, like interesting, I, I think, concept as well that to the other players, uh, Raven is communicating solely via text. To us, she's mostly communicating via uh, Paris, who is interpreting for her, unless you know ASL yourself. Um, so uh, it, it, you've, it's kind of like um, something that the circle can do that other shows can't do in this unique way. Yeah, this was a pretty inspired casting choice to do this because, you know, that basically like all these prompts come up as text and then, uh, you know, that the interpreter is there to, you know, uh, basically, you know, call out what, she, what she's trying to write. And so you would feel like um, this wouldn't be a, a really an impairment in the way that the circle works, right? Well, I mean, I think that's kind of the, uh, uh, her message in the, in the intros that like, uh, like I'm not... Uh, like a deaf person going on the circle. I'm just like a person going on the circle who happens to be deaf. Uh, this mm -hmm. is not an impairment. Um, a deaf person can do everything else that uh, that anybody else can do uh, other than hear. Um, do you think, so. Taryn, that this was a mistake for her to put in her bio uh, that she is a deaf person? Because uh, that, look, we would have been able to see it as viewers of the show. Um, but I just wonder if like, it's like it's, it would be such a great story for her to be the winner of the season, could people like down uh, rate her because they feel like, okay, well, everybody's going to rate her high because it's such an inspiring story. I I think, I think, you know, we talked about the strategy of the circle being difficult to master anyway. Uh, I think that you just got to keep it simple here. Uh, I'm sure that like being deaf is, is uh, an integral part of who she is. Mm -hmm. Um, and trying to avoid that in conversations and opening up to people, I feel like, uh, she'd be shooting herself in the foot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we meet Marvin, we get to see, uh, Marvin's, uh, backstory about him being the, uh, chemical engineer. Do we learn anything else new about Marvin? Not really. I think, I think I learned more about him from his big brother intro mm -hmm. than I did from the circle intro. Okay. Uh, Yeah. He didn't do the app clap here he didn't. in the circle. No. We the whole time on Big Brother, we were just excited for ab claps and we got nothing. No ab claps whatsoever. Mm hmm Uh he also though, uh I I noticed this was a very funny Marvin moment. There are a few funny Marvin mo moments uh to me. Um, but one of them was that when he was starting to see the other profiles, 
uh, he was looking at Chaz, Chaz's profile. He was like, he likes ice cream. Oh, I like ice cream. Yeah. But Marvin is like easily amused, it seems like. I mean, look. He's uh, excitable. It's a unique trait, liking ice cream. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 it's exciting when you see it. <laughs> For sure. All right. Uh, we've got Sam, who's probably uh, the biggest character of the group. Yeah, Sam uh, just has like that that sort of like quick wit. Um, like everything she says is just like funny. Um, and uh, she also has giant shoe slippers. Uh, giant shoe with, slippers. Yeah. Also, well, and she's got a, a pen. She clicks. Okay. Uh, she's a freelance makeup artist. Uh, she is somebody who is um, really uh, she highlights a lot of her flaws. She shaves her big toes. She has RBF, but she's oh she's honest about it. Yeah, she's. I mean, look, she's very honest. She's going to be uh, honest about uh, uh, being a more than two time cheater, uh, mm-hmm. and she's going to be honest about uh, the the four hairs on her toe. She uh, is who she is. Yeah, she, she's yeah, she's Sam. Yeah, and this is a person who nobody's going to think is a catfish, right? You wouldn't think so. No, I mean, just like being so boldly yourself uh, tends to to work out. Although uh, she may not even be here uh, by episode two, theoretically. I don't Possibly. think so, but yeah. Okay. Um, we meet Chaz. Chaz, I think, is another front runner to do well here in the Circle season five. Shampoo Poppy. He has a car wash business. Yeah, he washes cars, um, but he's going to pretend to be a nurse. Why? Why? Why lie about this? Because nobody would tell their secrets to a car washer. But see, do you tell I, your secrets to it? I guess say your medical history. Yeah, you. I mean, you tell your nurse your medical stuff like that's secretive to a degree. But I feel like. The kind of car washing that I saw him doing. He is he doing like detailing, like on the inside of cars. I feel like that can be pretty personal. Mm-hmm. You you trust your person who goes into your car and cleans all kinds of weird stains out of your car with a lot of personal secret information. I feel like they're pretty close. Yeah, they're gonna see like everything that's in your car. So yeah, I I don't know. This seems like uh, an overthink uh, for shampoo poppy. Yeah, I, the only thing that saves it is that he actually was in nursing school and it looked like he even had pictures of himself from mm-hmm. nursing school. Uh, so he probably has the knowledge to pass this off. Uh, it definitely doesn't seem necessary, though. Uh, I, don't, I don't know that like uh, being a nurse is really going to be all that helpful. Do you shampoo your car? Yeah, I, I, yeah, you can use like a car shampoo, right? For like the interior, right? Yeah, I think so. I think the mm-hmm. the yeah the the interior has, uses like a, a shampoo on the the fabrics or is whatever. That his specialty of like shampooing upholstery. Perhaps. Um, mm-hmm. I, I like think I have I, so many questions for him. I like I don't want to know about being a nurse. <laughs> I know, right? I I genuinely would be way more interested in 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 like hearing about the the car washing business uh, than than uh, oh you're a nurse like okay mm-hmm. I can, yeah I'm gonna. Can I ask you about this mole I have? Like, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, then also uh, we have, uh, okay, this one I, I think was the least interesting of the bunch. Billy Jean is here and she is Bruno. Yeah. And we do like, have to talk about Bruno. <laughs> we, do we have to talk about Bruno. Uh, and yeah, this one just uh, was not working for me. Uh, the, the two catfish were both called out as seemingly being very generic in chats. Um, and, uh, and and not only that, but like <clears throat> at least for at least Brittany is being played by like uh, this older guy. And the, mm-hmm. the contrast is very stark. Uh, Billie Jean uh, being Bruno is like, OK. What's mm-hmm. the difference? Yeah, except that Billie Jean is like a terrible flirter, is like way <laughs> over the top at flirting. Yeah. yeah, that's I think that's the other thing that I didn't like about Billie Jean slash Bruno is that uh, she was part of like the biggest flirt scene of the episode. And it was another like cringy, bad Embarrassingly, one. Yeah, bad flirting of like, <laughs> it's just hey. like, oh, my God, like, do we have to like, oh, oh, I'm going to teach you a thing or two. Like, okay. why we're still doing the hashtags. <laughs> we're still doing hashtags. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'd think the you know, the Gen Zers would get in here and be like, guys, this is uh, don't be such boomers. We don't use mm-hmm. hashtags in conversations. 
hashtag it's like i i date you anytime like <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing it's so bad like i uh, I just, it's, it's, I, I, I don't have no more words for it because it's been happening for the last, you know, three years of this show. So, mm-hmm. uh, clearly there's something in the air that just creates this kind of terrible flirting via text on the circle. All right. Those are the people that are going to be in the circle this season. Uh, in the first episode, we get an activity, uh, that the activity is basically a multiple choice game, uh, where people got to like vote for what type of person they see themselves as. And, uh, basically, um, everybody was giving the answers, uh, that they probably thought that everybody else, uh, that you were supposed to give. Uh, and then anybody who was an outlier, was like ooh hiss yeah you all differently all of these questions were lame except for the last one uh mm-hmm. like like it, 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 just without any other context uh listen to like okay Xanthi and Bruno said they were leaders <sighs> yeah Marvin and Sam said they were strip teasers oh and mm-hmm. Xanthi said that she wants to be successful yeah <laughs> like who doesn't matter yes well, she's gonna. She would rather be successful than happy, so she'll do whatever it takes to win, even if it makes her unhappy. Truly, yeah. Uh, the the cheating one was the only interesting one, yeah, uh, in my opinion, because it was it's it was like it's twofold. It's like, have you cheated, and if so, will you lie <laughs> how many about times? It? Yeah. <laughs> I liked how they uh, asked the question: whilst in a relationship. <laughs> Did you cheat? No, never cheat. Cheat more than once. Uh, cheat more than twice was even an option. Yeah. And Sam was there a, was there a twice option? Yeah, Sam cheated more. Oh, could could you? Um, because it feels like it went from once to more than twice. Hmm. I could be wrong. You have to go back and take a look at it. But Sam has done it more than twice. I, it truly, yeah. Uh, and. You know, that's that's going to turn some people off. Uh, but for some people like Chaz, you know what? I appreciate the honesty. I thought that Raven gave the best answer of that. She be- she said she cheated once. It's like the catfish would never say that it wasn't yeah. more than twice. Yeah. And she also like she said, like it was in high school, uh, mm-hmm. which she can explain later in conversations. Um, you know, is it, if you're talking strategy might be worth it to for a question like this. Say once, just be like, yeah, once and then have a story for it from high school or something. Yeah, I really think that the key to doing this after seeing this a bunch of times is like you can't be too look too perfect. You have to have like some just like with the catfish pictures, like people get this with the picture like they don't catfish with a picture of like a supermodel. Well, I guess that Billie Jean does. Um, but for most people like okay, so I, I'm going to catfish with kind of like an, uh, like a normal looking person and then people won't suspect that I'm fake, but they, their answers are always like the most perfect answers. Yeah. How, how, how about this, Rob? Pretend you're in a relationship and yep. then pretend you've cheated on that relationship. Once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My wife kicked me out. That's why I'm here. Cause I cheated on her. <laughs> oh my God. Like, can you, I like, I just want to win her back. Can you help me? And like, oh yes, yes, we'll help you. Mm. Um, I made a, I made a terrible mistake. I'm so disappointed <laughs> with myself. Okay. That's something a uh, river would have come up with. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we see a bunch of people like talking. Uh, that Mar- Marvin and Brett uh, have that moment together that you the mentioned. The big bro connection. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Marvin thought Brett was looking shredded with a bunch of D's. Shredded. And he's mm-hmm. laughing his ass out. Mm-hmm. Which yeah. I thought was not the normal way that you would laugh your ass. Mm-hmm. Um, but hey, he, the, he also does weird things with his abs. So yeah. uh, I, I thought it was very funny that Brett was worried that Marvin might be making fun of him by saying bro so much. Mm-hmm. Uh, because it immediately made me think like, uh, the, bi- the big brother paranoia is still with Brett. I think <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like he's still, he's still like, wait a minute. Can I really trust this person? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and he, he can, he can trust Marvin. Everybody can trust Marvin. Everybody can trust Marvin. Okay. 
So uh, we get some, everybody's like talking, some flirty conversations, but then we get our, like, I guess the big twist of the episode here is you have to do your ratings and then also state who you would block. And then two people, the two highest people, the people that they picked will then be blocked allegedly. Allegedly. Yes. Now, I I like this uh, actually a lot in concept because it's a great way to just kind of like kickstart some drama. Yes. Uh, where it's like these these first impressions will normally get smoothed over and people will get along. But you're really like planting your flag with the publicly stating who you would block. And it might be difficult to get over. I'm sure a lot of these people will eventually, um, especially with two people leaving and two new people coming in. There's going to be a big reset, I would assume, mm -hmm. which is one of the reasons why I don't like two people actually leaving. But I, I, when I first heard this, I was like, oh, this is perfect. This is going to be so fun because they're definitely going to flip this around. And they're going to make the people that were that, that wanted to be blocked the most actually the influencers. Mm -hmm. uh, like that's that's going to be super fun. Um, but they didn't do anything interesting. with it. They just went <laughs> like, uh, like well, okay, we now really these, in these influencers. Because the, the, we got a cliffhanger. So maybe they'll do something with, uh, I think it's more likely what you said earlier of they're going to make the two people who are blocked play together as mm -hmm. the next person to come in. Which, which if that is true, I really want it to be Sam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because ha seeing Brett and Sam have to come together and play together would be, would be very funny. Even with Raven and Paris, I love seeing two people in the room. Especially if they already hated each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so we'll go through the people. Um, Xanthi, she picked Marvin to block. What did Marvin do wrong here? They came I out don't too strong. No. And this is one of the issues, I think, again, with like, you know, I, I hate, I hate like uh, day one eliminations, especially if there's two people being eliminated. Mm -hmm. uh, I, and in general, I just feel like not only did I not know these people well enough to care about who got eliminated, but I also have no idea why most of them picked the person they did. Uh, well, they didn't even explain it. Like Xanthi picks Marvin and we get Marvin's response, response, which is like, what? Why? And like none of Xanthi, like, why did Xanthi pick Marvin? I have no idea. Why did Marvin think they had a connection? I don't know. Mm -hmm. uh you know just she flirted with him a little bit at, at the at the intro i i got nothing yeah. um and i felt like a lot of these felt very random but uh, you know uh, who knows bruno picked brett um and uh there will be three different people that will block brett uh safe to say uh brett is bad at the circle S seemingly uh mm -hmm. they 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 i and i noted this even before we got to this part that they really made a point of having Brett say multiple times before the ratings, before any of the blocking stuff, like, oh man, I didn't actually say anything in that conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, that yeah. opening conversation. He's getting a loser edit. Yeah, like, I, he just, uh, you know, uh, just that opening conversation just didn't, like, wasn't good in the group uh, chat. Like, just didn't say anything. Um, and that, uh, I think that seems to be all there needed to be uh, to, to send him out. Um, worth noting, he he wasn't exactly doing super hot uh, early on Big Brother either. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you can't play it cool on the circle. You have to be just like, oh, my God, I'm so excited to see you. Heart emoji, star emoji, heart emoji, hug emoji, high five, hashtag, uh, so happy to meet you. Uh, and, you know, you you can't, like, be coy at all. No, yeah, you got to get in there. You got to be, <laughs> you got to talk it up. Yeah. Just, anything, send any message, it doesn't matter what it is. Mm -hmm. Sam, she's also going to nominate Brett. That's her pick. Yep. She's not the influencer. Brett, uh, that he picked Sam. Okay. Um, interesting that, uh, you know, you have the stage is set here for Sam hates Brett. Brett hates Sam. Be f exactly. uh, very fun to have them be roommates. Exactly. And this is, this is a thing that the circle struggles with is that they struggle to keep two players in the game that don't like each other. Uh, mm -hmm. and when they are able to, it works really well. Uh, so I, I feel like we've seen a few seasons where we were kick off the season with two players who are like at war and then they yeah. both leave and then it's just boring from there. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, uh, we've got to find a way to keep the rivalries going if, if possible. And I would imagine that they're in the same mindset. Okay. Raven picks Brett and Raven was the influencer. 
Brett is blocked. Womp womp. Yeah, and I mean, this is definitely a fail from uh, from Brett because Raven was a person who was in that first four group that mm-hmm. he had a chance to even like speak with uh, and seemed like he was getting making some progress, at least with her. So the fact that she chose him as well uh, definitely does not speak well of uh, Brett's performance in those opening uh, moments. Maybe she was a Falte fan. <laughs> Maybe. That's another thing. I wonder if any of them knew... I, I imagine we would have gotten uh, some kind of scene if they had known him from his mm-hmm. brother. But yeah. All right. Then Brittany uh, is going to nominate Bruno. Yeah. Catfish uh, suspects the catfish. Yes. Yes. Brittany is, does seem to be on to Bruno. Yes. This, this, you know, catfish radar is, is strong. Okay. And then uh, we get down to the last two people. Marvin, his person that he picked is Sam. Chaz, the person that he picked is Xanthi. One of them is going to be the influencer and have uh, their person taken out. I suspect the influencer will be Chaz more than Marvin. I agree. When you have the person that Chaz is looking to eliminate saying, I rated you so high, though, uh, it's definitely a bad sign because Mm -hmm. that means that Chaz felt better about most other like pretty much everybody else. And the person he felt worst about also rated him high, which which means he's probably in a good spot. Um, I know we got a good a couple of good uh, Marvin ratings as well, but I uh, I don't know. It felt like like Brett when he was rating was maybe not super high on Marvin. Uh, by the time he talked to him, maybe, but it seemed like he was surprised that Marvin reached out to him and was still kind of not super trustful. So I don't think he got a great rating there. And then um, I I don't know if he he had a ton uh, from elsewhere either, but we'll see. Okay. You know, Brett and Xanthi potentially as roommates also uh, could be exciting television. It could be, but I think I feel like it also could just be very lame. (laughs) It could just be like a lot of like uh, like awkward flirting. Yeah. Brett and Sam would be ideal. That would be number one. Uh, But it could be interesting to see uh, what happens with uh, Brett and Xanthi. I guess it it could be it could be fun if like if they are flirting to to each other and then Mm -hmm. also flirting together with another person and using that flirting conversation to flirt with each other. Uh, I feel like Mm -hmm. there's something that could work there, but we'll see. And that's basically episode one of The Circle. Yes, this is kind of like a little cast assessment, uh, uh, episode one assessment. Um, I I can't say I love uh, the episode ones of The Circle in general. I feel like this one worked okay, but it also had this weird sort of like two people leaving. Like, is that real Mm -hmm. kind of thing? So we'll see. I feel like this was kind of a long runtime for uh, episode one of The Circle. like 52 minutes, I think. It felt like a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anything else to say about the circle as we head into the rest of this week's episodes? We have three more shows for this week. I will say I feel like the circle tends to be weakest at the start, uh, and then find its footing over the first four episodes. Healthy like middle. The second, the this the middle four episodes are usually the best, um, and then we get like uh, a, usually like a strong finish into kind of like a, a bit of a, a drop off sometimes toward the end. So mm-hmm. um, I'm looking forward to seeing what 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 comes. I feel like we've still got some people to look forward to as they join. For uh, sure. So we'll see. All right. The best is yet to come. Uh, we will have on Friday our circle roundtable should be Taryn, myself, uh, uh Sasha Joseph and uh, Asia Welch uh, with us on fr- uh, on Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern. We'll be live for that one. So you got a couple days to catch up on the rest of the circle. So that's going to be uh, coming up at Rob is a website dot com. Taryn, uh, what else you have got going on these days? Um, I think the uh, House of the Dragon year review just oh. dropped. Who was uh, on that one? Uh, myself, Grace, and uh, uh, Latanya Starks, um, and uh, we've got the Big Brother year wrap up that we did last week. That was fun. Yeah, uh, and I think we've already uh, announced that we're going to do some uh, Last of Us coverage as well over on Post Show Recaps. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Last of Us show coming. That looks HBO. creepy. Uh, it's it should be a little creepy. Should be a little fun. Well, maybe did not. You fun. play the game that that uh, show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's Did you get kinda, creeped out? 
uh, I, I, it's a, it's, yeah, it's definitely, it's a creepy game. It's, it's, uh, it's got some, I would, I would pay particular attention to the sound design of the show because why uh, they have it's creepy a, like bug noises. Yeah, it's creepy bug noises. You seem like you <laughs> like that, Taryn. Oh, it was good. Yeah, I mean, do you see the shirt I'm wearing? No, an Ice it, Nine Kills shirt, which is a a band that uh, does, does creepy albums music? and horror themes. Oh my yeah. god, too spooky. It's good stuff. Hey, they they should do they should do a horror themed uh, circle. So how would that work? Uh, that uh, one of them would would be catfishing, uh, and they'd be they'd be the killer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You have to find the killer before they before they kill, uh, aka block all of the players. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. Very spooky. All right. Well, uh, I think at some point, uh, I'm, I will check out that new uh, that new show, Last of Us, uh, coming up uh, on uh, that. That's with uh, uh, the the Mandalorian. Yes, Pedro Pascal, uh, mm-hmm. and and directed by or, or uh, showrun, I think, by the the guy that did uh, Chernobyl uh, recently. So uh, some 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 good stuff. Okay. Yeah. Um, I just got done earlier today. I talked about the year in the amazing race with Jessica Lee and Mike Bloom. So uh, be sure to check that one out. I've also got a uh, 2022 All Stars Brant Steele coming up uh, with Mike Bloom later on this week so uh lots of fun stuff coming your way before i am back with you for the circle week one round table coming up on friday enjoy the rest of the circle we will talk to you soon take care everybody have a good one bye